Today's project is a bird feeder. If you have already watched some of my videos, you may have noticed that birds singing in the background. Even though I live in the middle of London, many birds visit my garden and cheer me up while I'm working on the wheel. As a gesture of gratitude, I'm going to make a feeder for them. I'm using 1.5 kg of stoneware buff clay on a full-size throwing bat. This bat, made of 6mm MDF, is attached to the wheel using two pinholes to secure it in place. My wheel has semi-permanent butt pins. To start, I form the clay into a cone shape while ensuring the density is even and centered. Using both hands, I squeeze the bottom of the clay and shift the edge of my palms upwards. My left hand is slightly higher than the right hand, creating a spiral form that naturally lifts the clay. Next, I use the edge of my right palm to push the top from the 5 o'clock position towards the 10 o'clock position while my left hand maintains the clay's shape. I repeat this process until I feel the clay becomes easier to manipulate. Once the clay is ready, it's time to create the base disc. I keep the edge of my right palm flat and gently press the top of the clay while my left hand maintains the side wall's shape. As the disc becomes larger, I need to hold my right hand with my left hand to ensure smooth horizontal sliding. Once the base reaches the desired size, I make a center hole using my right middle finger with support from my left fingers. I'm going to make a ring, so I push my right middle finger down to the throwing butt. Then I put my middle finger towards me and slide it up along the wall of the clay. The clay that climbed up needs to be pushed back onto the main part without trapping air between them. A wooden rib is used to clean the bottom. And then I can use the rib to enlarge the center hole. I add extra water to the center hole to expedite the process. Behind the wooden rib, my left thumb and index fingers press the climbed up clay down to the main body. I repeat this until the ring becomes around 25 cm in diameter. This size can be adjusted to your preference.
The size is good now. It's time to transform the ring into a tube. I make a mark in the middle of the clay. Then I slowly press straight down on that mark. The walls start to appear on both sides of my right index finger. First, I stretch the inside wall. My right ring finger forms a hook shape to push the bottom of the wall. The outside wall gets in the way. So I need to adjust my hand and finger positioning. It may be a bit tricky at first, but you will quickly get used to it. I stay at the top for a while to compress the edge. Now I stretch the outside wall. I need to be careful not to go outwards. It's better to stretch the wall straight up. Once it's opened too much, bringing back this thin wall straight is not easy. Before closing the top, I need to remove all the water. A thinly cut sponge with long sticks is useful for this. The two sticks pinch the sponge in the center to prevent it from spinning. I'm going to close the top. I slowly bring the two walls together. Once the top is sealed, the trapped air inside holds the shape, allowing me to take the time to make a smooth joint. I need to slide the splash pan to clean the outside bottom. This cleaning process makes the later trimming process much easier and quicker, so it's worth taking an extra minutes here. The air vents are important. If I forgot to make these small holes, the tube will crack during the drying process. The clay wants to shrink, but the air inside doesn't. I leave the pot overnight to dry until it reaches the leather hard stage. I attach the tube to the wheel using skimmed clay. The purpose of trimming is to make the surface smooth and shape it into a round tube. Then I can carve patterns or press marks if desired.
I slide the metal kidney between the tube and the butt. My left fingers firmly press the metal kidney against the butt. Now I trim the other side of the tube. I use three pieces of clay to secure the tube. This side has more clay. I trim the corners with a loop tool to maintain a continuous round shape. The tube is now ready to be transformed into a bird feeder. I carefully flatten one point of the tube. This part requires extra care to avoid breaking the tube. I cut the tube in a C shape. I want to keep the top hole facing downwards to prevent rain from entering. And the bottom slightly straight so the food can flow through the tube and be held there. I clean the end hole to ensure it is clear. These cuts are for the string. I make several cuts so I can adjust the string's position to keep the bottom of the tube flat when I hang it from the branch. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed watching this pottery process. I'll see you in the next pottery video. Happy creating!